Not only do disciples take Jesus at his word, by definition, they're characterized by persistence in going on taking his word into themselves. Now, <clears throat> I know there are people out there who have been along here with us, and the word of God may have bitten them. Much as we might not wish that to be the case, it is the case, and they don't like the feel of its teeth. And I understand that. I understand that a lot. I can sympathize with the way that feels. But again, when that happens, you again, you simply have two choices, and this is the way it works out. You can feel the Word of God cut you and recoil from what it teaches, and not have God's Word remain in you. Or you can feel it cut at something that you love too much, and you can allow that to separate you from the one who has the words of eternal life. And that's the equation. And disciples of Jesus, we're not saying decent people, nice people, moral people, anything of that sort. We're describing specifically the followers of Jesus. They take his word in and they remain in him. With his word always remaining in them. Not slung out when it starts to cut across things that we fancy. So here's how you remain in the vine then. If that's characteristic of a disciple of Christ, if that's by definition what a disciple of Christ is like, here's what remaining in the vine looks like. Here's Christ's recipe for his disciples as they gathered in that upper room to deal with difficult days to come. Maintenance is required. You've got to maintain that graft. Here's his words are already in your life, but forces of attrition are at work in your life too. And regular maintenance is required. Why? Well, basically things like this. We hear so much of everything else, don't we? We hear so many messages in the course of a day. I did a little bit of research, Google's marvellous, isn't it? I came up from British figures, UK figures, which is strange because that's normally all American. The average person sees 47 adverts a day on commercial television. 47 adverts a day on commercial television. That's figures for 2011. That's up 22%. Over a fifth on 2006, we're seeing more and more and more advertising bombarding us with its messages. With things it teaches us to aspire to and desire. A large part of it apparently is down to programs like Downton Abbey. Uh, because because Downton Abbey proves very, very popular and it's got ads on commercial television, doesn't it? Did you want to say something? And skips through. Oh, a really good point. <laughs> Given the option, people don't want messages coming in because they've got too many messages coming into them as it is. People trying to push your head in different areas and directions and boxes. And we become resistant, resilient to that. A very good point. People record and then skip the ads. Why? Well, it's making my point, thankfully. What it's doing is it's saying this. We're resistant to all this stuff coming in. Leave me alone. Because there's so much tosh being pushed in and we need to maintain our input from that which is right and just and true from, from, from the Word of God. We need to exercise the discipline to do that. Maintenance is required because there are forces at work in the world that wear down our understanding of and our clinging to and our maintenance of that graft to Christ. And because growth in nature is a feature of life. Tissue dies. Memory fails, does it not? Yes, it does. Don't know, I can't remember. Um, but, but you see the point. It's a natural thing in life, isn't it? And we need to renew. We need to keep renewing. So practically, in terms of keeping on maintaining our graft in the Word of God to Christ, what do we do? What are we talking about? Okay. You are grafted to Christ if you're a disciple of Christ. You're grafted into the vine. That vine is the rootstock that puts your way all the nutrients that grow fruit in your life, make you fruitful as a believer. How do you maintain that graft? First thing Jesus says is the word of God and getting it into you. You remain in me, yeah, fine. My word remaining in you. How do we ensure that God's word remains in us? Do you know, so much of the Bible that now gets dissected and analysed and chopped into little bits and chewed and smacked around, it was initially intended for reading. For reading? Letters? What are letters for? They're for reading, aren't they? 
Poetry, what's it for? It's for reading, isn't it? Historical books. What do you do with a historical book? You read it, don't you, Karis? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. You got it. And Gospels and Discourse, most of it, it's for reading. Here's the ground level, first floor access point for remaining in Christ and His Word remaining in you. For disciples of Christ, the reading of Scripture is optional. It's maintaining your relationship with Christ, maintaining that graft into the vine. How do you say about that? Because you see, it's not just for keenies, you know, keen CU types. It's not just for them. It's not for odd corners of slack time, giving God the fag end of the day. The reading of the Bible is essential to the of Christ. It maintains that graft. And reading the Bible gets the Word of God retained in your mind, feeding your heart, and bearing fruit. That's what the Father's looking for. When you read the Bible, the graft point gets strengthened, so sap flows and fruits form, and the Father himself then gets glorified. Now look, mankind has never had it easier to read the Bible. Did you think I was pointing out the window? No, it was a flash head, isn't it? A flash head? How exciting! I can't compete with that! <laughs> Shall we have a look? I know it's in the loo. Okay, so we'll get involved going, shall we? <laughs> Reading the Bible has never been easier. From two angles. Firstly, because of natural resistance. You know, literacy levels are really, really high now. The people who can read is at an all time high level. And secondly, because those who find it hard to read have got more help now in terms of dyslexia provision and so on in the last 20 years than we've seen in donkey, never. Mankind has never lived in days when the reading and hearing of God's word was easier. Hearing of God's word. Not just the technology of learning, so, but the technology that brings us the reading in the first place. You can be driving your car to work in the morning and over your MP3, 4, 5 or 6, whatever it is, comes rattling into your ear space, comes the Word of God. Isn't that amazing? See, I've got this phone. It's ever so clever. It's got the ESV on it. How about that? Free. Amazing. It just talks to me. It's better than that woman's voice telling me which way to turn, I can tell you. The Word of God is at the flow into us. What an amazing thing. Literacy, dyslexia skills, translating the Bible into other languages, printing it for distribution, technology, audiobooks, MP3, MP4, voiced over videos you can play on your phone so you can actually see the place in the job and some bloke in a funny shirt walking down into it as the John the Baptist bit is getting read. How amazing is that? Play it on your phone, ebooks, Android, Kindle. If Paul looks down from heaven on the tools that are disposed to propagate God's word, he's got a word or two to say to us at the gates when we get there, hasn't he? You had all that! What were you doing? If Jesus' word is to remain in us and give rise to continuing fruitfulness, reading through God's word has got to be the foundation for that. And of course then you come up with issues and problems and difficulties, you want to know some more, you want to dig in, and you want to study, so we've read, now we're going to study. Marvellous. There comes the studying of the scriptures. Isn't it marvellous we've got the internet to help us with that? Have you come across blueletterbible.org? Oh, go and have a look. Marvellous. Not only the English, but the Greek. And a load of commentaries. And a load of other stuff as well. You can really dig in. There you go, there's the verse we're looking at today, look at that. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, uh, then uh, ask whatever you will and. Yeah. Marvellous. Studying scripture, getting it into us. Some of the American blog sites have been pretty much awash recently with tales of you know, great and godly people in the past who've made it their ambition each year to take one book and get to know it really well. I don't know why that is. That's the fad at the moment. But certainly studying scripture is a really important way to get it in to you. God's word remaining in me. All the while, you see, there's this process of not just reading it, but engaging our cognitive processes with God's word. And John 15 is showing us that's fundamental to following Jesus and bearing fruit for God. Oh, now we're getting to sound really keen. Reading it, studying it, yeah, we'll have a bit of that on a Sunday afternoon in this choir. Memorizing it. Of course. 
for God's word to remain in us when it's getting worn away all the time and needing maintenance on that graft to him, should involve us in reading and studying, but really getting it into you has got to involve remembering it, doesn't it? Even in these days of, you know, Android and Kindle and e-reader and stuff like that, none of those things actually get the word of God to dwell in you. You're not sucking it up and remembering it. It's not in your head, it's in your, it's in your SIM card or whatever. Memorizing scripture most directly addresses the way that God's word can remain in you. And you can learn God's word and recall it most directly. And it forms and reforms your character. If you go online, you'll find topical memory system from navigators. Don't have to even go and buy the book anymore, it's all there. Take a verse and learn a verse each week. Maybe you want to write it down, a little card, carry it around, you put it out every now and again. At the bus stop, you know, that sort of thing. Learning God's Word provides you with the Word going with you to reflect on, to have remain with you each day. Do you learn Scripture? Because if you do, something great follows next. That enables you to meditate on it. <clears throat> I'm not suggesting anybody takes a cross-legged position on the floor. And, uh, you know, and all, I don't know, we don't know that, really. Biblical meditation, Christian meditation, is a matter of chewing on by the Word of God. Crucial way, taking it in, remaining in, and it remaining in you. And finally, speaking. How do we maintain the influence of the Word of God in our lives? We do all these things ourselves, reading, studying, memorizing, meditating. Very often, I know from my own experience, it's very often in the act of telling it to somebody else that you really get to grasp what it's about. And of course, time's gone and I haven't got time to deal with that. But very often, you grasp what God's Word means when you explain it to somebody else. And His Word bears most fruit in you as Christ's own disciple when you sow it in somebody else.